It's bench moving day. Hey gang, welcome back to the shop and my channel and the ongoing rebuilding of the workshop. This is going to be a relatively short video because this is the day I'm going to move the workbench over to replace the outer portion of the outfeed table of my table saw. This will give us full access to use the workbench like we didn't have over here because it's just a mess. Uh, it's on the Rockler casters, like I said in the previous video, and I really, really am impressed with these things. I mean, I can move this down with fingertips. Um, and if I have to move things around or want to move this out to another location to, to work on, I can. Um, there's a couple of things I've got to do before this can move over there. I'll show you those in a second. But first of all, let me show you a little funny thing. Well, you might think it's hilarious. I'm not so thinking it's so hilarious thing that happened earlier this week. Fun thing. I uh, put this all together and then <clears throat> pulled out the lower drawers to adjust it up to the level of the chop saw. And when I tried to do that because it was so heavy, the little adjustable foot leg, this one specifically, the screws tore right out of the wood. The screws that came with it. And they were, they were like half inch. So I decided to look for more robust ones, which I did buy, and they're a uh, link in the description. But the big difference is they're made of uh, thicker steel, and they have screws that come in from here on the bottom. So it screws up into the workpiece this way, and it screws into the workpiece this way. And those have worked wonderful. This is all jacked up and ready to go. So that was my fun little project. So, so let me get on to showing you the things I got to do before I move the, uh, the bench over to here behind the table saw. What I want to do is preserve these runout areas for the runners for the jigs I use on the table saw, primarily my uh, cross feed, my, my cross cut sled. I've got some others, but the cross cut sled has to fit come all the way out to here to get through the blade as much as I want. So what I need to do is cut this off at about a quarter of an inch on the other side of these runoffs. Now just slice it right off. This part here left behind, which is on hinges right now, can be screwed directly into the two, the two skirts, can screw it into each other, so that will stay and not move. And um, this part here will just get pitched away. I've also got to re reroute some of the dust collection hoses underneath. I want to take these two hoses, one for the jointer and one for the table saw, and route them behind this leg here. This, this, I want to trim this one up because it sagged a bit and I want to get it a more straight run. But these are the important ones to get behind here. That clears the space for the uh, bench to come in here. And then these can run behind the bench over here out of the way. So um, let's take care of that. Oh yeah, I got to vacuum up around and clean around the uh, table saw as well. I may wind up moving the table saw out that way a little bit because I have more room now in the shop, but we'll see. Okay, all cut up and modified. Um, you can see that there's a skirt board on the bottom of this. There's also a skirt board here where the hinges were because this used to flip down. And I can basically clamp those together and uh, screw them together and that'll remain there forever and permanently. Yeah, I did both this with a fold down end that I used once in more than two decades. So what's the point? So now I gotta clean all this up, move the hoses Fasten this in place and then move the bench. Onward and onward and onward. I attached it to the, uh, this out feed table with screws under here. So I still have, of course, my, uh, my runouts. Um, uh, I've rerouted the hoses, as you can see. A couple other things I did. I actually re re moved the saw a little bit. I moved it a bit this way and I moved it a bit that way. Um, this is the space that I want open for assembly and for, you know, we're doing big projects. 
But in that space is basically you're standing at the lathe or, or the grinding stuff. The CNC machine will move over here, wood storage there. But anyhow, and the other thing I did is I, uh, this is on a rolling stand. Excuse me. This is on a rolling stand and it tends to wobble because the wheels are rubber. So I, when I got it into position, I took some maple, cut it into wedges and I wedged the rolling stand to the floor. So now I've got a nice stable base. It won't wobble anymore. Not that it really mattered. It wasn't a bad wobble. Uh, and, um, but I still have the option to move this whenever I want. I didn't take it off the stand because that would require a big engine lift to lift this thing off the rolling stand. So that's where I am right now. Now it's time to move the bench into place. Well, that's it. I've got some adjustments to do. I lined it up so it's, well, not quite. <coughs> there, I lined it up so that I can get stuff through the, there it is, through the uh, jointer without hitting the, the, the uh, side vise, the end vise. Get those out of the way. Um, so, this is it. This is the way it's going to be. Uh, all that space is freed up. So, um, end of this video. Uh, make great things out of wood, of course, and I think I'm probably going to tackle the south wall next because that's the one that's going to hold most of the tools. And uh, oh, also the uh, CNC out of there and put put a wood bin in there. So until next time, as I said, make great things out of wood.